and, and can do uh, video chats. And and yeah, I mean, my family lives here, and so um, okay, cool. And I have, I, I have a place here, and so yeah. Oh, you have a place there? No kidding! Wow, that's mm -hmm. very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I'm recording this video. It'll be uploaded to the uh, Hyperledger YouTube channel, and uh, I posted the uh, the uh, code of conduct and the uh, Hyperledger antitrust policy in the uh, uh, in the chat. So let's start. Kyle, thank you for taking time for us today. This is uh, this is about metadata. It's about stuff that you're working on and uh, moving forward. Tell us a little bit about DDX. Yeah. So uh, DDX or DDX or yeah, I don't actually I haven't I don't know ex exactly how they pronounce it, but in any case, uh, D D E X dot net. <laughs> so if you want to visit the website ddex.net uh, and ddex is the standard organization for digital music it came about around the time itunes came about and it's what the tech industry as well as the music industry use to pass data back and forth it's very much um as as much not internet as possible while still being internet so it's interesting being in web3 and then interacting with uh, this methodology so uh, in web3 there are lots of public ledgers and permissionless people can query uh, as much as they want so uh, one person puts up the data and then many people can can engage with it but with ddex uh, there are uh, all, all um, databases are private they're owned by the companies so uh, oftentimes they're not even connected to the internet for the majority of the time uh, and and then when the data is transferred to another database it's just between two databases so it's just one-to-one -one relationships uh, and it's only the need to know information it's a very different philosophy than the web3 philosophy uh, but it's what the the music industry is built on and there are uh, uh, historical reasons as well as um, modern practical reasons why that's the case. Um, and so DDEX is now building standards for Web3. And uh, the conversation is how do these one-to-one -one, um, methods of communication handshakes, how do they basically, what I would call oracles, uh, how, do they, how do they become oracles in Web3? So how does the handshake happen over into Web3? And I, some, and also a very interesting question is how much information is going to be transferred and is that, should that information be on, on a private blockchain or on a public blockchain? So we're still just early days out yet. Uh, it's, these are important questions because if, if Web3 wants to use traditional catalogs whatsoever, engaging with the DEX standard is, uh, I believe it's, it's necessary. Uh, so if uh, Web3 wants to sell nostalgia and, and other uh, highly lucrative uh, emotions and, and sentiment, and especially as Web3 is built on collectibles, and so a lot of that is nostalgia, uh, the old uh, action figures from when you were a kid, you know, now you're uh, much older and have a lot of money, you, you, you buy them as a collectible, and so that's, that's the case in, in, in music as well. So. Uh, the working group has had its first meeting last week, and its next meeting is on the uh, on the twenty eighth. Uh, so yeah, so it's it's really we're just at the at the at the beginning of this, but it, it is actually happening. So that's it's exciting. Are these pu uh, public meetings? How are they being How are they being held? Yeah, so it's it's very much that sentiment of uh, uh, having closed databases that are hardly plugged in the internet at all. So the only way to really engage in these meetings is to be a member of DDEX and sign NDAs and then do this all behind closed doors, which is really non-negotiable if uh, that's how the traditional music industry works. And so DDEX uh, itself is very open. It's, it, it is a, a tech people, they also understand who their clients are and 
And so they have, uh, they want to push the needle forward and, and that's why they made this working group. And they also have to follow the, uh, the modality that the, the music industry uh, majors and such require. And, and yeah, that is membership and then NDAs. So I'm not in the meetings actually myself. And what I've done is I've set up the meeting. So I, I thought, well, instead of having the uh, traditional industry make these standards all by themselves, let's get some Web3 projects in there, uh, especially Web3 projects that are very, that lean quite a bit into the ethos of, of Web3, of, of permissionless and composability and all that, all that good stuff. Uh, have them become members and, and they can participate in these behind closed doors. So at least there's representation. And then I am the liaison. So whatever is made public, then I'll be I'll be communicating that to the um, EVM standards and um, open access. So basically, what I assume is their API um, uh, exposure. I don't know if it'll be called a API. Um, that that'll happen at some point, and then uh, I'll be sharing that with with the wider ecosystem. Uh, but that's why it's important to get engaged with. DDEX, uh, this working group, is really the only way to know what's happening is to be in the working group. Kyle, is that in the the true spirit of uh, uh, public and permissioned blockchain? Is the is the DDEX group uh, being really protective of what it is that they're the voyage that they're embarking on is it a is it a uh, is it going to be just a a is it going to be just a a different type of uh, a different uh, perspective for the industry for this industry uh, or is it going to be more open and more collaborative and more equitable uh, do you think once they uh, establish uh, what the, what it is they're setting out to establish? Well, my hope having Web3 projects involved in the working group is that it is, it is as Web3 as possible given the constraints of the, the traditional music industry. So I suppose in another, uh, another future where the Web3 projects didn't join the working group, I... I would think that the standards that they're producing right now wouldn't really have the uh, Web3 ethos in it whatsoever. Um, and, and that's an ethos that uh, is um, one that originally originated from my vantage or for, yeah, for how I see it, uh, the Linux culture, uh, GNU Linux and, and Web3 is, uh, uh, is yeah, I, I feel part of that lineage. Um, so. So, but DDEX itself, it's, uh, again, the, the people that are running DDEX, they're, they're engineers, so they, they think like us. Uh, the, the music industry, it's, uh, it's, it doesn't really think like us. Um, music industry traditionally has actually been very uh, litigious towards new technology, uh, if we think about it. And so that's one of the, my hopes here is that we can uh, mitigate the litigiousness uh, not relive the Napster cycle and, and all that. If we have to have notice, hopefully something like notice and, and notice, not notice and takedown. So that to me, where these battles are, just looking at what, is, or what has happened with the music industry and tech in the past. And the reality of it is we're dealing with copyright here. And so the copyright owners, and there are only now three major labels uh, that own the vast majority of copyrights in music that, that are lucrative, they have an immense amount of power because they have monopolies and, and all that. And so uh, to me, this is uh, what is a, the most practical path uh, because we do have to engage with copyright and copyright, copyright holders don't really, they're not passionate about tech per se. They're, they're passionate about music and they, perhaps would be fine if they were still selling only vinyl records and there wasn't any such thing as the internet. Uh, 
So, so that's that's how how I I see it. Um, yeah, it's it's not from the lens of they're following the ethos I agree with. It's more from the lens of um, how do we how do we have it so that um, we have a path for compliance, and and then the Web three ecosystem can um, has lower friction with that path for compliance with copyright and and can build really cool products for the consumer. Uh, and then down the road, when there's more CC zero and and a paradigm shift, great, I'm I'm all for it. Um, but in the here and now, I feel like it's I guess if we look at DeFi, it's that they're custodial and non-custodial. We have Coinbase. Coinbase engages with with banks, and so that's what's happening here, but with with music copyright. Is it the uh um the intention of uh ddex and the collaborators to make the industry more equitable in your view is that the uh or is it to further protect their interests and maintain their monopoly what's the uh what do you think i think for ddex it's equitable uh, uh, the people running ddex um, for their members, well, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I've worked so hard to get Web3 members is because I do know those Web3 members that are DDEX members have that value of more equitable. Um, if we leave it to only certain kind of members, right, and go, oh, we don't like those members, so we're not going to become members ourselves, well, then we're not on the negotiating table. And so that means DDEX is um, pressured to be less of what we like. And so there's that, that, that difficulty kind of in many areas of, of politics uh, where it's, do you, if there's something you don't like, do you then, uh, for instance, like voting, do you just not vote or do you double down on voting? Um, so we're, we're kind of in that, in that spot. Um, and I also see that, I don't, so the copyright itself is a monopoly. I mean, that's all copyrights are. So as long as we're engaged with copyrights, whoever owns that particular work, what their the, the main use they have is, or I guess um, lever they have economically is is that ability to impose um, a monopoly. And there are compulsory licenses, and so it's it's possible with more um, uh, that would that would be a legislative change. It would be a big lift, but we could have more compulsory licenses down the road, and that would uh, make things more equitable and. And that's one of the things that's already happened with on the music publishing side is um, people can cover songs. And so, so then labels are more free to do what they want. Publishers can't control them, but if publishers could say, Hey, I only, only I have to prove who, who covers, then we probably would see publishers much more in charge of labels uh, where labels tend to not have to, they tend to dictate the narrative. And so that those are two different copyrights, the sound recording and, and the underlying work and, and, um, and there is a, a hierarchy that, and the labels are, are um, tend to have more uh, sway than, than the publishers. Um, so yeah, so all of that, I guess I, I have faith in Web3, that Web3 is building the more equitable future. And so my take here with DDEX is, yeah, I have Web3 members join the membership so that that more equitable future voice is uh, in the membership. And then, the real goal here is that legacy uh, uh, content and um, uh, culture and such can be used in Web3. So it's, it's almost like there's this, this um, uh, strata layer in, in, in the uh, geology, right? And we're kind of, and I, I just, I'm, I think it's important that we have an ability that the, the earlier strata layer engages with the higher, uh, uh, newer strata layer, but it's that newer strata layer that I think that more equitable future is, is being built on. And right now it's more just making sure that that, that um, songs from the seventies, we, we can engage with them somehow. Um, I, I think it's a really big lift to have songs from the seventies um, be, I mean, that would be redistributing wealth and all of the other types of just I don't think really possible so it's more um 
in a in, uh, hundred years from now, it will be quite equitable, but in, in, the, uh, in the now, uh, we have to live with what we got and build what we want to see and, and um, have a way for those to communicate with each other. So there's less fighting. That's kind of my philosophy here. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of talk and action in the NFT space uh, from uh, indie uh, music people, film, et cetera. Um, there is some legal challenges that they face thinking that they can uh, do licensing, et cetera, et cetera, and, and sort of circumvent the, uh, the traditional legislative uh, avenues that uh, the industry fits in. With, uh, with blockchain, with uh, distributed ledger technology, can something be built and live outside of the legacy industry outside of DDEX and, and be successful? Is it possible to start now with a, an industry that uses metadata, uses blockchain, uses crypto payments, uses smart contracts to manage the entire process from start to finish and not have the intermediaries that are in many cases consuming a lot of the, uh, the, the income, a lot of the revenue streams that uh, artists and uh, content creators uh, deserve more of. So do you think that uh, DDX is, is, their focus is, uh, is the current inventory and how to protect that um, but there's risks uh, associated with going forward. Can, mm. can we build outside of a DDEX? So I see DDEX a little bit different as in they're not so much protecting the current. Uh, it's more they're actually uh, having the current communicate uh, where otherwise wouldn't communicate at all. So it's that there's a database that without DDEX, the information that database would not leave that database whatsoever, but with DDEX, it does leave it. Uh, and also it's easier for another party. Like say, say Spotify has a, strikes a deal with Warner Brothers. Yeah. Um, well, with DDEX, another company like uh, SoundCloud, it's a lot easier for them to strike a deal with Warner Brothers because that one-to-one -one handshake, DDEX has decided it. So there's not that extra transaction cost of, okay, not only are you able to use our copyright, you have to license our copyright, but we also then have to build out a system of um, passing our, our metadata over to you. Where DDEX goes, okay, well, that system of passing the metadata over, that's, that's standardized, so just follow DDEX. Uh, and what still needs to happen, though, because it's how copyright works, is that uh, uh, the parties have to agree on, on licensing. So I feel DDEX is more um, greasing the wheels a bit, um, yeah. uh, 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 having them a little bit less squeaky. Web3 is definitely building outside of uh, the traditional system and it's doing it well. So really kind of my main um, comments when I'm chatting with the with Web3 devs that are, are um, constructing the future as we speak, I, I actually, there was a, there's been a long debate this morning in, in our Telegram group uh, about topics that are, are very, um, uh, proximate to what we're chatting about here. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, it's a very smart conversation uh, occurring. Um, so really my, my point is, and, and that was part of our Telegram chat, is, is recognizing we don't necessarily know that if something is uploaded, um, that we can trust the person who's doing the uploading. So the moment we allow people to upload, somebody could upload a song that they don't actually own the rights to, and then eventually the rights holder comes and um, is, is litigious, right? So even with best intentions, uh, right now the solution is because it's a it's really small industry, it's manually vetting. And we're talking about KYC and, and other ways to, to automate that. Uh, it's, it's going to be tough with full copyright always to, to engage with um, uh, the way Web3 works out. However, there are definitely smart people working on, on figuring that out and hopefully it's good enough at least for safe harbors uh, for the uh, platforms and such. But we're so early now that yeah, it's really just like, it's, it's manually doing it, which I think is great actually, because oftentimes we skip manual and go straight into automation and then we do a bad job because we don't really know what we're automating. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and then the other one is CC0. So I, the devs are, I mean, I, I, when we're, uh, at some point I'll, I'll actually engage with them because there's a little bit of a, uh, it's a nuance here, but CC0 is still copyright. CC0 can't work without copyright. It's a license on top of copyright. It's just one that allows uh, open use. There's issues with CC0 chatting with artists in that uh, CC0 then means that a song can be put on a political campaign. So the artist disagrees with that politician, right? That their, their songs on there and that matters because oftentimes that musician's identity is connected with their song, right? So then it seems like the musician themselves is advocating. So say Willie Nelson, a musician known for his ethics, he's put on some political campaign then it seems like it's Willie that's, you know what I mean? So that, that's tough. So it would be, I think it would be dangerous for someone like Willie to do a CC zero, even though I suspect that his values, he, he would want to do CC zero uh, as long as he was uh, making um, uh, a good wage, right? It probably follows his ethos more. Um, but yeah, so that's, that is an issue with CC zero. Uh, so moral rights, well, right now I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about how we can kind of separate in Web3 economic rights from moral rights and, and that can help with those types of issues. So even when it's, when we say, okay, we're not gonna, we're gonna do away with copyright and the, and the mode we can have that right now is that we do creative commons, CC zero is creative commons, zero means zero rights, right? So it just says, I'm, I'm basically waiving all my copyrights. So it's in a, we can, it still relies on copyright because it's, it's just a contract and copyright, but we can think of it simplified as basically having no copyright. So it's not quite public domain. That's when we have no copyright, but it's about as close as we can ever have uh, when we do have copyright. Uh, yeah, so even that one's problematic. So we're just, we're early out yet, but but I do see that a lot of really smart people, really passionate people are uh, when it's when it's new songs. So like, uh, especially EDM, because that's the culture here already, uh, that's kind of pioneering how uh, a system that's permissionless and composable, uh, uh, that, that that's a music uh, uh, industry, uh, how, how that will actually work out. Right now, the only way that uh, it's being monetized is being monetized quite well. And so music execs are definitely excited about it, but it's being monetized in a, um, in a collectible way, which means a very few, basically like fine art. So very few patrons almost, they, you know, buy the song or what have you. And uh, and that's that's great that people are making money off of that, but I, I don't know how it's scalable that is. And it also doesn't necessarily jive with the point of music, which is really about um, consuming more and more and more, right? It's, it's about having Spotify on 24 seven and constantly uh, um, uh, yeah, in, in engaging with it. So- Kyle, did you, yeah, Sorry, Kyle, did you, did you call that EDM? Yeah, EDM is electronic dance music. And so it's a very oh. broad genre. Okay. But, but devs tend to have EDM friends because EDM uh, artists often have dev skills. And, and so it's, it's fairly, and then and it's also Gen Z tends to like it. So uh, when I see music, a, a good chunk of the Web3 music that is, is uh, testing this stuff out is, uh, is in the EDM genre. And, and there are cool things EDM can do as well because it is fairly digital. So there's a, my friend Stemdow, um, they're they're a great team, and they uh, they are they have they've gamified stems. So stems are just like the bass line or the a vocal line, right? And so they'll have a, a top artist. I think the artist they currently have is Elohim, and uh, they had uh, uh, Poolside uh, in the in the summer. And so they, Elohim has a song that's famous, and so she then offers the stems, and then people can remix it. And so remix is also really big in uh, EDM. And so they've gamified remixing, and and so that's 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 fun, and and that that makes sense. It's a, uh, uh, as a, as a use of Web three, so it's it's very uh, it, well. I don't know if it's permissionless, but it's definitely people are permitted to play the game. Uh, so it's it's very collaborative uh, with 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 the audience, and so that's yeah, that's where I hope music goes is is this collaborative because that's what music used to be is yeah, very collaborative right it's, uh, still is i mean if you're hanging out with your friends but as far as like an industry um but you know i, I got a guitar you got a bass let's 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 jam right <laughs> is that is apple music big in this uh, involved at all with the ddx are they one of the members of the 
I'll have to double check, but I'm fairly sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much all the big players are, are in, involved with, with DDEX. Uh, so yeah, I'll look up real quick, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're, uh, they're part of it. Um, yeah, so board members, Spotify, PRS for music, Sound Exchange, Google, um, Yima, SSM, Pandora, Universal, Amazon Music, BMI, SoCan, and Apple. Yeah, Apple's a, a board member. Yeah, ASCAP, Cobalt, Sony. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. It uh, certainly tells me a lot about what uh, what to expect from uh, from the uh, uh, from that industry. I I, I can't I, with that with that sort of horsepower behind the industry. The the, the little guys are not going to have a lot of sway. Uh, I think uh, you know I'm interested in in the concept of uh, of open source and. Uh, open source being Hyperledger, open source being, you know, a, a collaborative, anybody can play set of rules, you know, bring your, bring your talents, bring your skills. Do you think that, uh, that something could be built to compete with DDEX on Hyperledger, using Ethereum, using all the different tools out there, all of the different blockchains, and basically capture the the uh, the uh, you know the, the the new uh, up up and coming artists that uh, that firmly believe in the in the equitable side of uh, of music and film and and all all of those things. What's your what what are your thoughts on uh, uh, building a competitor to DDEX? Yeah, so to me, DDEX, I like it. We're I. Where I really focus with DDEX on the engineering side of things is DDEX is creating standards for one-to-one -one database communications for databases that are rarely plugged into the internet, right? So they're like before web one, you know, web one, web two, web right. one, web two, web three. This is before that. So I, I feel it's less competing with DDEX because DDEX is just the handshake for when it's a one-to-one -one communication and more having, um, one to many, which is how I consider this one, right? I, I post something, I post a smart contract, I publish it, and then many people can use it. So that's why I think it's one to many. Uh, then more and more parties will use one to many. And wherever one to one is still required, DDEX standards are already there. They make sense. And um, DDEX standards aren't dealing with one to many. DDEX standards also are dealing with just copyright. And so they're not dealing with NFT. And I, I personally believe NFT is a, a new type of intellectual property. Uh, and, and, you know, there's trademark and such. And I don't really think, I think DDEX is fairly just focused just on copyright. So it's, to me, it's less competing with DDEX and more backwards compatible with DDEX. That's, that's really what it is. And so that's what I, I believe this working group, that's the main value I hope gets, comes out of this working group is that there's backwards compatible DDEX and that backward, backwards compatibility uh, matches our uh, ethos as much as possible. So there could be a few ways that this backwards compatible comes about. Uh, and so having actual Web3 projects in the room, uh, it's more likely that it's going to come about in a way that is the um, most equitable uh, type of backwards compatibility. But that's really how I... Um, how I, I take it. It's not where we're competing with DDEX, it's that we're being backwards compatible with them. So then whenever we have to engage with that one-to-one -one relationship, then we have an ability to. So so importantly, uh, a major label can't come around with RIA or something and sue a, a small Web3 project out of existence because there's this, uh, a way to be backwards compatible and compliant enough that at least there are safe harbors then, right? I mean, it's not like uh, YouTube has done away with copyright infringement, it's YouTube has enough tooling that uh, it has safe harbor uh, and it, it can take advantage of uh, digital millennium copyright act. And, um, and so, so that's, that's how I, I uh, that's how I'm interpreting the relationship. It's, I mean, DDEX itself is not actually a market player. 
And a reason why I set up this, I was able to set up this working group is because I also don't have a project, uh, a Web3 project uh, at the moment. So I can be neutral. So I do, I do sense that DDEX uh, is neutral. Uh, one of the reasons they were available for me to, to uh, engage, I'm also neutral. And then the working group, those are non-neutral parties, right? So the, the, there's a bit of uh, jockeying and, and such. I was, I went to their plenary and, and um, uh, did a presentation about NFTs and that's how this working group uh, came about. And I saw a little bit of that jockeying. I mean, it was definitely civil, but that's kind of the point of what, what DDEX is. It's a way to, to have that back and forth between these major players and still um, decide on a standard that everyone agrees with, right? So Sony will be pushing one way, Universal will be pushing another way, Apple will be pushing a third way. And so, yeah, so I, I had a little bit of a, uh, a uh, exposure to that. Uh, so with this working group that we now have, uh, Web3 projects will also be able to do a bit of that jockeying. And so whatever this backwards compatibility that comes about, uh, my, just that my, my goal here is that it's uh, as fair as possible. And then what it will allow is Web3 projects don't have to like what we're in the Telegram group right now is uh, concerned about copyright infringement. They don't have to be concerned because they know they have, if they implement these tools, then um, they can, uh, they can have safe harbor or something like that. I mean, we're still early out yet. And then the other thing I actually think is it would be fun, uh, not just uh, kind of you know um, heavy stuff, but fun is just being able to license some nostalgic pieces and, and have that part of the uh, the um, enjoyable NFT, right? Uh, and so don't, I, 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 it's going to be a lot easier, I think, to to bring in those legacy pieces uh, if uh, if we have some some DDEX standards that that make that more uh, more straightforward, uh, but we'll, we'll find out what the standards actually what they produce. Um, then it'll be then we'll have a clear understanding of, of what they will or will not allow. Is there a uh, is there a roadmap established for uh, this working group? There might be. They had their first meeting last week, uh, but yeah. So I won't be. I won't be able to, uh, unless they share that with me, they decide it's public, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna be a party to it. And any thoughts on what, any, any opinions on what to expect a uh, year, two years, uh, six months, or, or is there any way to, to estimate what, uh, whether they, they would succeed or whether they will, uh, uh, you know, commit to something in terms of uh, finalizing these protocols? Yeah, I think they want to move relatively quickly. I think their next plenary is in November. And so they, I would assume, would want to have a bit of a rough sketch. And then maybe the plenary in May that they actually have something that they vote on that, that is implemented. Uh, part of it is the NFT market died down. So I don't know if they have as much fire under their uh, uh, um, feet as, as they did before that went happened, but they've also been aware of, I think they first started in, uh, interacting with this technology back in 2018, maybe even 2017, something like that. So they've always been uh, uh, paying attention and, and I believe that they see this now as the Overton window. Uh, and um, so even though the market has cooled down a bit, uh, they might still have that assessment that it's the Overton window and, and they want to get these standards out um, as soon as possible. So, so yes, majors can get a cut of the pie. Totally. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot of motivation when it was really, the market was uh, really hot. And I think, I think their, their belief is that it, it would be great when, if the standards are all there and their actual products, they're using them when the market gets hot again. But I mean, I obviously can't speak for them. I'm, I'm kind of just guessing here, but uh, it does seem like they're, they're moving, uh, they're moving as quick as they can, despite them being an organization that requires a lot of consensus by um, fairly uh, um, incumbents that are often, well, in the past at least were uh, reticent to engage with technology, but, but 
it does it was um i'm hopeful based on the conversations i've had that the incumbents are not so uh against technology anymore they recognize technology is always going to uh um shake things up disruption is part of technology and i mean vinyl records were technology too uh, and publishers used to be on, in charge and now labels are in charge and so so yeah so i i do believe now i can't actually say but it does seem like the music industry is aware that they just have the way to work with it is to to ride the wave not to get upset at the wave and try to punch it <laughs> yeah speaking of crypto winter what are your uh just a side note, what are your thoughts on uh, when we may come out of this uh, this uh, slump? And uh, it certainly was the price action that got uh, NFTs going and all of the all of the uh, um, ideas and uh, around surrounding NFTs and moving in, 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 in an upward direction. When do you think uh, we might see a change in sentiment and uh, and uh, popularity of uh, of crypto again. That's tough because there's there my, my macro um, uh, uh, considerations as well that don't have much to do with crypto, but of the economy just generally having problems. Um, and then uh, the most recent news, I guess, with the economy is there's uh, a for some people over fifty percent chance that by spring will be in a recession um it also though so this is my first proper cycle I, i'm not as knowledgeable as people have been through multiple cycles but it does seem like real actual products get built um in, in a bear market like this and then um, they're getting built and people don't really know about them and then and then they get people finally enough word of mouth happens, the critical mass goes down and, and people go, wow, this is such a cool product came out of nowhere, you know, overnight success type of thing. Uh, and then, so people get a little crazy about it because it's um, something that is so uh, mature that they've just heard about, right? And so then they buy in and then they see other people buy in and then that's kind of this uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. And, and uh, so that's where this speculation goes down. And I see in Web3, like I'm, I'm personally spending a lot of time in, in DAOs. And I see that's a, a potential product when it, it kind of gets to that point where it's consumer friendly, that we can have another, um, uh, that that could be the thing that propels uh, crypto back up into a bull market. Uh, and there could be other products as well, but it does seem like the hype over the NFT products, that's over now. Um, so they've kind of died down to their actual utility value. And there, there can be ways to make NFTs even more exciting, right? And so kind of reproductize them. But um, I mean, not, it would be nice within six months or so that there's at least the people that are building that it starts to catch on fire. These these products that are actually like re, um, novel products and that's why they're catching on fire. And that's why people get really excited. And, and, and you know, the, the late majority gets a little bit too excited and that's what creates the bubble. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm at least, I mean, personally, we're, we're really busy um, Lex Dow because even when things are bad, lawyer, actually in some senses, lawyers are, are appreciated more um, because when lawyers are kind of, when they're, they're good, people go, well, why are you saying no <laughs> when I want to do something? <laughs> and then when they're bad, it's like, oh, uh, help me here and I, I you know so so yeah um but it, it i'm i'm i really would like the the bear market end sooner or later i guess but yeah i, I can't really i don't have a crystal ball so i'm kind of just shot in the dark here well i'll i'll add that uh, i think if you're uh, if what you're seeing as an estimate of uh, the spring being a, a major recession i think we probably have to get to that point it has to happen before things will turn around. So that's that's uh, maybe uh, maybe that's the uh, the magic period. The spring and summer of uh, 2023 will be the uh, the the next uh, 
the next uh, move. Um, I'm uh, going to uh, see if uh, John, hey, John, how are you doing? Hey, sorry about that. I was in another meeting and no, listening, no listening with all. one ear and trying to be present in the other thing. With yeah, the other yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. John, um, you've been following this uh, great chat with uh, Kyle here. Do you have any questions for Kyle? Can you maybe give us a little... Uh, a little something on what you're up to and you are you in the industry or you um what are you building go ahead sure um well i used to work at pandora um and did uh, some web3 experiments at pandora <clears throat> um which we presented to ddex uh, a while ago um i'm now in the working for an idv company um and i guess my only question this is great to see that DDEX is taking this up formally. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I think that will help a lot when it comes to, um, you know, setting guidelines and maybe actual standards in which people can sort of innovate within. So um, desperately needed and that's awesome to hear. I'm super excited. Um, I guess my only sort of generic question was, Kyle is, is is there any intentional relationship to Hyperledger or is it just a, this is a great place to talk about this kind of stuff? Yeah, well, I mean, it would be great if uh, Hyperledger thought about joining in some capacity uh, as a DDAX member and uh, and then participating in this working group. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if, if you are interested in that, I can definitely set up uh, the introductions and um, that's what I'm already doing with, with other uh, groups and um, so far, I don't think it's been an entire blockchain, but that would be uh, that would that would be great. Um, so far, it's been projects, uh, some of them la larger projects, though. Uh, so yeah, so how, whoever would be in Hyperledger, that would how Hyperledger would would join. But I, I think that's a great idea if, if Hyperledger is uh, interested. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think um, I think Hyperledger is an interesting um, angle when it comes to industry because it's meant to be private consortium based stuff. I think there's a lot of overlap there with uh, interest from, you know, as opposed to using Ethereum or something like that, right? I mean, this may not be a chain choice. This may be protocols on top of that, I get that. But I think there's a lot of really interesting um, tie-ins with Hyperledger in terms of interests, a lot of overlapping interest there um, with the industry. So I think that's interesting. I, I agree, yeah, and uh, uh, my thought is that majors would be more comfortable if they start to uh, dip their toes in, into blockchain and to leave this uh, databases that are hardly online at all, that they, they do a private enterprise uh, and then something like Bayesu can then go full. So it's kind of a, a midway. Uh, and yeah, right now it's kind of the way I see it is that there's the uh, traditional system and then the Ethereum system and, and like that bridge is gonna be pretty tough to cross whatever DDEX does. And so I, I definitely have, I mean, that's one of the reasons I, I'm, I'm participating. I mean, that's the main reason I am participating in Hyperledger definitely is, is that I, Hyperledger I feel has a way to kind of smooth that out and um, just on the engineering practicality uh, thought process that yeah. Hyperledger can, yeah, eventually it goes over to Ethereum, but how does it get from this one-to-one -one all the way over to the just totally open um, free market? And Hyperledger, I think, can especially with something like Bayes, you can 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 bridge that. Yeah, I, I agree. And well, this may be controversial, but I don't know that it necessarily ever has to be completely open. Um, depending on whatever the 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 goal of the working group is, or maybe not the the output is. Um, there's certain as DDEX itself is sure it's a publicly published standard, but realistically, it's only used internally. Um, but not only, um, but mostly used internally as a communication method, right, between actors in the industry, right? So whether you publish the standards or not, um, whatever whatever people end up using, whatever the actual product is, um, may or may not need to be public. And, and um, I know that I, I kind of overheard when I was dividing my attention between the two meetings earlier, I, I overheard a little bit talk about um, this idea be behind, you know, being private and being public and, and all that stuff. And um, 
I just have to say that my experience in the music industry is yes, that um, there, are, there are certain times when sort of building in public is not productive. Um, and I think that the industry itself uh, does move better in a, and I, and I would say to, um, to, to offer some perspective, I think that the names you mentioned in terms of who's involved is actually a very uh, large group for a music industry um, sort, sort of uh, partnership. And um, that's about as public as I would expect um, to get is having all those people involved. So I think that's actually a great, um, usually it's always been like one or two or three people, right? And so setting the standards for the rest of them. And so I, I think it sounds like you've got a lot of great people from all corners of the industry involved. Um, and, and to the balance, the point, you know, I, I heard that, um, you know, it, something like this does miss sort of the input from the public or from, you know, we, I, I think it was called the small guys or something like that, um, indies. And so um, that's definitely a tough balancing beam. Um, but again, you know, DDEX is, is these standards are pu published. And, and so I think there probably will be room for comment at some point in some form or fashion. Um, yeah, well, they have, um... So that's again, DDEX being neutral and recognizing that they're a facilitator. And so they have to facilitate in the way that the parties want, right? And so that's why NDAs and such are so important for them because that's what the majors require. Uh, they also though, uh, one of the reasons they're successful is where they, I guess, had their own, um, they did have their own ethical opinion on, on things is that they, uh, they see how much a, a, a project is making and if it's an indie, then the membership is not that expensive at all. So it's it's rated out. So, uh, so an organization that basically they, they make sure that people aren't priced out and they can get their voice heard. They do have to do membership, so all that NDA stuff, um, but at least there's not an um, uh, a economic moat. They actually try to make sure that there, there's a bridge there. And so uh, people that are, are serious about it, uh, basically anyone who's serious about it, even if it's early stage, can, can join DDEX. Uh, uh, they can they can handle those costs, and yeah yeah so definitely DX is trying to be as as public as possible, recognizing that it's a they're creating standards that are private, and and yeah I mean like it might change, but one of the ways that um, Pirate Bay Spotify beat out Pirate Bay is that the user experience is just easier with uh, Spotify. So um, I'm, we were talking about this. Uh, years ago, uh, my community, uh, when uh, we were having debates about whether we should sue peer-to-peer -peer or um, or not, basically, uh, and my side, we were not into suing peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, basically, cause peer, suing peer-to-peer -peer means you're suing your customers, and so that just seems like a bad idea. And the, what we are are the way that we framed it is that people buy bottled water uh, all the time, even though water is free. So if, if there can be, I think it's multi-billion dollar businesses that are selling something that is free, uh, even though music, yeah, maybe it's not supposed to be free or whatever, but there's a channel where it is free because people are just infringing and they don't care. Uh, instead of uh, spending too much energy dealing with that, instead spend the energy on having the customer experience um, uh, frictionless, enjoyable, just like buying an, a smart water bottle, right? Uh, and and so the way that translates practically with music is metadata is really important. Uh, so when I listen to Spotify now, the, uh, a lot of the songs, they have lyrics and the lyrics, uh, as the song is uh, progressing, the lyrics will highlight, right? So you, it's really easy to sing along. And um, and so just, it's, and, and as Spotify continues, there's more and more, um, enjoyable experience. So it's not just frictionless, but also um, surprisingly fun compared to if I, if I go on, uh, download it um, illegally, none of that, right? Um, and so then, and also it, it's much more, yeah, it's just more difficult, but more speed bumps. So instead of stopping something, just create some speed bumps on that side. And then on the uh, other side, uh, have it be more enjoyable, uh, more frictionless. Uh, but that's one of the reasons why uh, a lot of this data that's in I think that's in um, that these organizations hold. They're 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 
not going to want to make it public, at least not in the short term. Uh, that's well, then um, they'll they'll throw away the way they figured out how to compete with with free, basically. Yeah, I agree, and I I think it's an important uh, distinction to make that um, Web three technology can be used in private situations. Web three technology, you know, can be used in all types of situations, and these are industries that can benefit from Web3 technology, and that doesn't necessarily mean the public blockchain. Um, and I, I, for one, would just vote that, um, if anyone else is listening to this, that um, that in itself does not make, you know, DDEX an evil uh, organization or any or the, the music industry in general. I think that um, there's plenty of opportunities in the music industry um, when it comes to the accounting side, when it comes to the <clears throat> um, ownership side, when it comes to the um, rights side, or all these things, um, just like DDEX itself as a distribution method um, was a huge improvement um, to that system. Uh, you can add web, you can sprinkle web three technology into all those touch points um, and create value for artists, value for DSPs, um, reduce costs, re you know, there's just, lots of touch points for improvement on web3 technology and that doesn't necessarily require you know the, the public blockchain so that's very well said yeah that's better said than i've, I've said it so far thank you <laughs> i think there's uh there's no doubt that there's going to be some casualties in the in the legacy music industry and the film industry as a result of this technology uh that is uh uh parsing metadata and using it uh, as a as a main tool for whether it be distribution or payments and things of that nature. I think the industry fears just how deep those casualties will run. And it's understandable, but it's inevitable. And I think that uh, um, I, I worry that uh, that they, they're going to be too protective of of their uh, of of the of the their inventory of music and film, and not give an opportunity to uh, uh, to allow the technology to see what it can do for them. That's my yeah. Well, I, I mean, my I could be wrong, but my impression is that we're not talking about creating exclusionary technologies. What we're talking about is um, uh, using Web three technology um, to streamline uh, an existing industry. And there are, again, the, the inefficiencies in the current industry uh, really do um, create negative uh, headwinds on artists and revenue that is lost because accounting is not done properly. Um, publishing is, is not accurate, right? There's, there's uh, ownership rights get confused. There's millions of dollars spent on audits that don't need to be spent. There's... There's, there's a lot of places where Web3 can just uh, create money that wasn't there in an existing situation. And I don't know that we're talking about locking out technology from other people. These standards are usually published. You can certainly use the standards in your own system. You know, like DDEX itself is an XML format, right? Like that's not exclusionary, right? It's just um, a way which a bunch of send uh, data and deliver files. Efficiency, which created value in the entire industry. Um, that's my impression um, of what we're talking about here. I'm sure all these different actors have their own ways to capitalize on whatever new technology is created, but ultimately we're talking about creating efficiencies, which should benefit everybody. Um, again, I'm speaking from the outside. I don't know what they're talking about in the meeting, but that's my impression. Yeah, um, good. To totally agree. I, I John, have to, do you have you got? Uh, sorry, Kyle, go ahead. I have to jump on a, another call, um, but I just want to say real quick that uh, so the one area that I guess it's problematic is sometimes people, certain individuals, they um, their job is to to create those efficiencies, right? And so they're intermediaries, and those people will be disrupted to some extent. And I, I do know certain initiatives when they've kind of addressed that head on, then there's been not a, a basically political pushback from people that will, um, if, if it's 
actualize that way will lose their job kind of overnight and whatever. And, and so um, uh, even the efficiencies does, we do kind of need to be um, tactful with, uh, but, but um, I, one of the reasons, so there's this, uh, the way that I, I created this uh, DDEX working group is uh, I started something called Web3 Music Coalition. And the reason I started that is because I saw that a, a bunch of the Web3 people were basically, they're out with a pitchfork saying, we're going to disrupt you or whatever, right? And I, just this morning in that Telegram group, similar thing, they're, they're relating it to uh, Uber and how Uber uh, taxi drivers are used to be all of uh, transport. Um, and uh, now it's like, I think the, the stat I saw this on, on that uh, blog post that was shared this morning was like 13% or 30%, something, you know, less than hundred or whatever, a substantial cut. And, and it was disruptive. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so that's, that's a narrative that is being pushed right now a lot. And that narrative, I, I will get people their backs up. Uh, and mm -hmm. we, so the narrative we tried first, which was, um, we're going to, we're going to make it efficient. Well, sometimes people don't want their books to be audited because either they're, because they're intermediaries, or even sometimes a lot of companies actually have been fraudulent. They don't want that to be known. Right. Um, so that one, the going head on with that one, that doesn't work. And this new strategy of like, oh, we'll just disrupt them. I don't think that one necessarily needs to work. What I hope happens is more, and that's why I'm leaning in on NFTs, is more uh, what uh, in the music industry, when there were only publishers and then labels came about and it wasn't like publishers disappeared. It's just labels made so much money in a whole new type of area of making money that now suddenly labels are, are such a big thing. Uh, and so that's what I, uh, I think that would be a, a more helpful narrative is that there's publishers labels and there's this new third thing and then nfts like resale that's a royalty that didn't exist before and so looking at how there was uh, neighboring rights uh that uh people don't really care about neighboring rights uh 20 years ago but now that's a big portion of um uh, royalties and and so that that's still a copyright but now we have this whole nft space that we can play around with different royalties and, and we already see how resale is helpful so maybe there'll be a new name for it like uh, publishers labels and then this third thing or not, I don't know. But really what is exciting is to me is this whole other, like basically continuing to diversify the revenue streams. And so consumers are going to be spending money in, in, in ways that they aren't now. And we, we see a little glimmer of it already. And, and so that way we don't, we can really avoid the disruption narrative. Uh, and, and I'm working with that in the legal community too, with automating the law. It's, well, if you automate the law, lawyers are out of a job. Was, no, lawyers are, they're just going to, accountants had that in the 80s where accounting was automated in the 80s and then it's not like accountants have gone away. CFOs are more important than ever. So they're able to, they're more empowered. So the people that don't embrace, well, that's tough. They're, you know, change. But with the people that do embrace, what ends up happening actually is um, it's just the uh, productivity, right? Just the skyrockets. So that's what I'm really hoping here is that we focus on overall productivity uh, and, and, and people just continued education to so get them up to speed and, yeah, just so I, I gotta I gotta run, but um, Kyle, yeah. thank you very much um, for taking the time for us. Uh, John Kyle is the uh, lead of the uh, Hyperledger Music subgroup uh, for the Media and Entertainment subgroup. I I put the uh, membership directory in the chat there, John. If you want to uh, throw in an email address in there, get set up, then we can uh, continue this discussion with uh, Kyle and uh, other people in our groups. But uh, Kyle, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. Yeah. Take care of yourself. John, thank you so much for coming. And Jay Field LLC, thank you for, for attending today. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Brett.